I don't really care which side tries to peer pressure me into not liking something. I've always found the concept to be a little strange. Shaming someone for enjoying a piece of corporate entertainment is authoritarian behavior as far as I'm concerned. Doesn't matter what side is doing it either. Sure, make fun of the movie itself, but why make fun of the people who enjoy the movie? To the most common of mindsets, I like a lot of really crappy movies. I love it when something is just totally dated. The datedness can give it the exact charm it needs to be good. You know, but for bad movies that I like, there's like the standard B movies like, you know, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, The Stuff, uh, Newcomb High, you know, all, all that kind of sort. But uh, like my favorite James Bond movie is Moonraker. Not only was it corny, cheesy, and sometimes downright silly, it had a fantastic soundtrack, one of John Barry's very best. Flight Into Space is just a great piece. My favorite Indiana Jones movie is Temple of Doom. It was the most ridiculous and over-the-top out of all of them, really. And it displayed the notion that non-Abrahamic religions can be powerful. Not that I think any religion has that kind of power, but I appreciated that this movie diverged from the norm. For probably mostly nostalgic purposes, my favorite Superman was Richard Donner's 1978 film. I will always think of Christopher Reeve as Superman. Corny, cheesy, silly, yet it had a fantastic soundtrack by John Williams. The worst scene in that movie was when Superman did time travel via the rotation of the Earth. Can you imagine what would happen if the Earth's rotation was significantly disrupted? It certainly wouldn't have anything to do with time travel, I'll tell you that. I still love Logan's Run and all its massive datedness, you know, and its bad effects and cheesy, memorable lines. There is no sanctuary. Unacceptable. The answer does not program. When it comes to aspect ratios, Logan's Run was like 2.39 to 1. Uh, one of the widest movies ever released. The soundtrack from Jerry Goldsmith was very original as well. It was a fascinating mix of electronic and symphonic instruments. And I suppose I'm mentioning soundtracks a lot, but it's important to me. If the soundtrack, the full soundtrack to a movie, sounds like one of those really cliché trailers you see for action movies, that's seriously going to detract from the movie for me. If I'm judging a movie on a 1 to 10 scale, a bad or cliché soundtrack will take off at least two points. With all the technology that's available today, there's no excuse for a cliché soundtrack. It doesn't have to be symphonic. It just has to be original in some way. Something memorable. I mean, maybe it doesn't necessarily have to be that original, but at least it has to be memorable. It, it, it can't just seem like you just watched an extra-long trailer. I mean, for many years, oftentimes the trailers will feature music that's not in the movie. So, you know, and they have this limited selection of, of ones that they use, and they all sound about the same, really. So, yeah, I mean, if, if an entire soundtrack sounds like that, yeah, it's going to take off at least two points. <laughs> Tron Legacy is a good example of a movie that has a good soundtrack that isn't symphonic. The movie itself was kind of disappointing for me. I mean, if technology that gets brought from the computer world into the real world doesn't work, then what kind of threat would that technology be? Oh, I'm going to beat you with this thing that might as well be a prop or something? How would Clue have been an actual threat to the real world? Why did Flynn have to die to stop them from going into the real world? It was a huge disappointment for me, considering just how much I love the original Tron movie. I hope that there are more movies that come out that aren't scared to be dated. The more you try to remove any sort of datedness from a production, you're removing something that makes the movie memorable or, or the piece of entertainment memorable. You're removing that. People just like have this fear of something being dated. It's just like, no, that's, that's the charm. I, I, I feel the same way about architecture. Oh, that looks like that's from, from, uh, that looks like a 50s building. Yeah, and is that bad? Right? I mean, there's just, I don't know, it's weird. Um, I enjoy things that are dated, and I'm just rambling now, so um, have a joy, joy day!